back with Simple Spur Living. And today I just want to talk to you a little bit more in detail about general hardness and carbonate hardness. Um, how that affects your aquaponics or hydroponics system or aquarium. Um, even if you don't have aquaponics and you just have fish, it affects that as well. Um, and uh, kind of go into a little bit of detail on what carbonate hardness is and general hardness, what the difference is, what they're a measurement of, uh, what good values and bad values are for your system, what amounts you should have of each, um, why it's important, and also kind of a little bit more detail on, on what it actually does and what it means to your system. So, um, you know, I've been running this system here in the basement uh, for about seven or eight months now. Uh, actually, I guess about seven or eight months since uh, I built the system. Um, and I've learned a lot, I've done a lot of research, and so I just wanted to share some of the things that I kind of found interesting and some of the things that I've learned along the way here. Um, hopefully this will help uh, some of you guys if you're starting a new aquaponics system or uh, even you guys that have uh, had an aquaponics system and you've run it for quite a long time. A lot of these terms are thrown around very generally and you never really understand exactly what they mean. So hopefully this will be interesting and uh, we'll follow along here and learn a few things together. Um, I'm using this kind of format here just because I found it easier to follow along and use this as a reference. Uh, I know Bright Agrotech, a great channel, a lot of great aquaponics information. Uh, Dr. Nate Story over there uses a similar format when he goes through some lessons and things. Um, check that out if you haven't checked out his channel if you're doing aquaponics stuff because there's a lot of great information about nutrients and nutrient availability and pH and other things there as well. Um, so hopefully I kind of stole this, uh, this format from him, but I found it to be easy uh, for me as well as for the, the viewers uh, to follow along. So, um, so what we're going to talk about today is general hardness and carbonate hardness and basically what the difference is. I'll start with that. So general hardness is kind of what, you, what people talk about when they talk about hard water. That's kind of the most common way to put it. Um, well water is often hard water. Um, and what that means is that it contains a lot of minerals. So it contains a lot of calcium, magnesium, also some iron ions and some other minerals um, in the water. So that's, that's what kind of hard water means. Um, now why is it important? General hardness really isn't as important as carbonate hardness is to an aquaponic system, but it is important to the fish. Um, certain fish do like a lower general hardness or a higher general hardness. It just depends on the type of fish. Um, I have goldfish in here right now, they don't really care, um, but uh, the way that the fish absorb nutrients and oxygen and minerals into their system, um, the general hardness does affect that. And so um, you have to, you know, if you're doing like some tropical fish or some other type of fish, they have specific hardnesses that they like. So generally the like African and tropical fish, they like uh, softer water. Um, or like I said, goldfish and I think tilapia and a lot of other like perch and bluegills and things like that, they, they don't really, the, the hardness doesn't matter that much for general hardness. So, so that's the kind of the basics for um, what general hardness is. Now, as far as carbonate hardness goes, carbonate hardness is a little bit more important and a little bit more um, detailed, I guess, or a little bit more in depth. Um, carbonate hardness is basically the, the presence of different carbonates in your system. Um, the most common is going to be calcium carbonate, that's um, things like eggshells and, and marine shells, so any type of seashells or clam shells or snail shells, anything like that. Um, all that stuff is made out of calcium carbonate. Um, this is going to be the most, that's the most common uh, carbonate that there is, basically calcium carbonate. Um, so uh, this, is, this is how uh, the carbonates are um, generally in your system, is in that form. There's also other carbonates that people have probably heard of. Potassium carbonate is one of them. There are others, there are many others. Um, that's commonly known as potash. I've heard of that being used in gardens and things like that to raise the alkalinity or raise the pH in the soil. You can mix potash in. Um, so I've seen that. I think I've even seen that available in garden centers and things. Uh, generally not something you'd add to an aquaponic system that I know of, um, but people will definitely use, and you can safely put like crushed up eggshells in like a nylon and, and hang those in your water in your sump tank or um, any type of seashells, anything like that. Um, there are also calcium carbonates that you can buy in powder form that are safe to add to your system as well if you need to raise the amount of carbonates in your system. So um, that's what the carbonate hardness is measuring. Now, what's good and what's bad? Um, and how do you measure it? So I'll start with that. Uh, API makes a test kit um, that you can buy. I can't remember the exact price. I think it was like $10 on Amazon. Um, API actually has a test kit for just about everything. They have iron test kits and phosphorus test kits and the master test kit, which tests for 
uh, pH and nitrate, nitrate and all that good stuff. So I'd recommend looking into those. Um, but this carbonate, this is just a carbonate hardness test kit. There's also a general hardness test kit. As I kind of explained here, I'm not that concerned with that right now. So this is the one that I'm using. It just tests for carbonate hardness. Um, and so what you do basically with the test kit, I've already gone through it here, but you basically just fill up your test tube with water, you add a drop, you shake it up, you add another drop, you shake it up, and you keep doing that, and you count the number of drops that you add until it turns yellow. Um, it starts off as, as blue, and then eventually it turns to yellow. Um, the system that I have here, and uh, if you've watched any of my other aquaponics videos, You'll know that I have a, a real problem with carbonates in my system and I have a problem with pH being too high because of the type of rock that I'm using. Um, and so my level of carbonates was at the highest end of their scale, it was at 11. Um, that's, that's not a good thing. Uh, you generally want it to be lower than that. So the recommended range of carbonates in your system is between 3 and 6. So you don't want to have none because then you can have wild fluctuations in pH. Um, you don't want to have too much because then generally you have a real high alkalinity or real high pH and uh, that's not good for your plants. Uh, you know, they don't grow as well, which I have discussed in detail in many other episodes. I also have a video specifically talking about pH. If you're interested in that, I'll link over that at the end uh, of this video. So, uh, so that's kind of the, the, the deal with, with general hardness and carbon hardness. Um, as I said, if you get the test kit, this is really the only way to know how much you, you know what how much carbon hardness you have in your system. Um, I would recommend grabbing one of those and just testing it out. If you have a lot of trouble with pH being high or a lot of trouble with bringing your pH down, even if it's not that high, like if your pH is at 7.5 and you just want to edge it down a little bit, so you go and you get some vinegar, which is basically acetic acid, uh, and you add some of that to your system and it doesn't really budge, or it goes down for a day and then it goes right back up the next day. Um, that probably means you have a lot of carbonates in your system, probably most likely calcium carbonate. Um, that commonly comes from people putting, like I did, river rock in their system that contains limestone or contains fossils or shells or something like that in it somewhere. And again, that's where you, that car calcium carbonate comes from. So, um, so that's kind of the basics with, uh, with general hardness versus ca uh, carbonate hardness. Um, I'm going to do a real quick demonstration and just kind of talk a little bit about the chemical reactions that happen when you're adding specifically vinegar, acetic acid, to your system and kind of what it does to this calcium carbonate as it eats it away um, or neutralizes it and how that can help buffer your pH. So I'll go ahead and show you that here. Okay, so what I have here is um, basically just a small little dish full of some of the rock out of my system here, uh, which contains a lot of calcium carbonate or limestone. There's a few rocks in this that got mixed in with the river rock that I bought, and it definitely has limestone in it. So what I'm going to do is just add vinegar, and you've seen me do this test before, and you've seen a lot of other people do this test before with their rock. Um, this is how you test to make sure that you have a pH neutral rock. Um, if you get any fizzing um, on the rock, then that means that you do not have a pH neutral rock. Um, and basically, in this case, what it means is that the rock has some calcium carbonate or limestone um, in it. Uh, you also may get rock that has fossils stuck in it and other types of shells, which are calcium carbonate. Uh, what happens is you put that into your water and your water's at a nice... 7 pH let's say and uh, over time the, the um, calcium carbonate dissolves into the water and your water gets loaded full of carbonates like mine and the pH gets up to about 8.2 and it stays there and uh, you can't bring it down. So so what's actually happening here um, I thought was kind of interesting you can see all the bubbles rising up here. Try to get in as close as possible. With all those little bubbles fizzing up off the rock there Um, basically what's happening is we have acetic acid. Um, acetic acid is the standard household white vinegar. Um, that is mixing with the calcium carbonate and it's breaking down into a couple different things. So the bubbles you're seeing are actually carbon dioxide. Um, there's also some water produced and there's also some calcium acetate um, which comes from the acetic or 
the acetate part of the acetic acid. Um, and I'll show you the chemical formula for that if you're interested in it. Um, I'll put it up here in, in closing. But but that's basically what's happening. So all those little bubbles are carbon, carbon dioxide. They're they're coming off of the, the chemical reaction between the acetic acid and, and the, the vinegar here and the calcium carbonate. So that kind of proves that we have calcium carbonate in the system or some other carbonates um, because vinegar will react with other carbonates also. Um, anytime you, so if this were our aquaponics water, anytime we're trying to add some vinegar, some other acid to bring the pH down, uh, it may go down for a day or two, but as soon as all these carbonates are eaten out of the system, um, it, you know, it's going to raise right back up. It's going to raise right back up to whatever pH, probably 8.2, that seems to be where, where, it, where it won't dissolve anymore. So, um, But I just thought I would show that. I've already showed the vinegar test many times, but uh, this just kind of actually describes what's happening here, which I thought was kind of neat. Alright, so that's, that's basically it. Um, I just thought I'd share kind of some of the things I've learned about carbonates and general hardness and carbonate hardness. Um, hopefully you found it interesting. Um, just the, the chemical formula or the, the chemical reaction that was going on there, basically the acetic acid um, plus your calcium carbonate, and this is what you end up with, calcium acetate and carbon dioxide and water. Um, that's the reaction that happens. So um, I just found that interesting. I always, I, I never like to hear the, you know, the, the general terms, this eats away at that and this, you know, the fish don't like things and the water doesn't like that. And, you know, I like to kind of try to figure out what's exactly happening. So I found this, this kind of interesting. Um, again, if you're just starting off with aqu aquaponics and trying to learn more about it, um, you don't have to really get into all this stuff. It's, you know, the, the mo most important thing is that you use a pH neutral grill media in your grill beds. That's really the most important thing. Um, and if you're going to filter your water, you may want to filter, you know, 75% of your water and then add some uh, non-filtered water into the system. Just so that you have a little bit of carbonates, a little bit of general hardness, a little bit of carbonate hardness in the system so that you have a little bit of a buffer with your pH. Um, if you have zero carbonates in your system, you're going to have wild swings in pH and uh, that's never good for fish and it's not good for plants either. So um, if you have too high of carbonates, you're not going to be able to bring the pH down. So um, that's a bad thing also. Um, if you're having trouble with those types of things, I would recommend grabbing one of these uh, test kits and just testing the, the carbonate level in your system. Just kind of check out what it is. You might find that uh, that helps you diagnose the problem and uh, help, you know, figure out what you need to do to, to, to mitigate it. So. Um, but I, like I said, I found this stuff pretty interesting, and uh, as I'm switching out my, the rock and my grow beds here and getting some better stuff put in, um, I'll take you guys along with that process. So I'm getting ready to switch another one out uh, this weekend, and uh, every two weeks I'm switching another one of these grow beds out and getting that river rock out of here. So um, please hit the thumbs up button. I really would uh, appreciate it. it. It really does help me decide what type of videos, what type of content to make and create and put out for you guys. So hit thumbs up if you found it informational at all. Uh, leave a comment, questions, I'll try to answer them or direct you to a resource if you have questions about this stuff, if anything was confusing or if you want to learn more, uh, please drop a comment down there. I really do uh, try to answer every one of those that I can. So um, subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along. Uh, I'll put some, uh, some links to some other videos that you might find interesting here at the end of the video. So uh, hang in there and, and check those out. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a good one.